Hello everybody, this is Kressel Snapdragon with the first of a series of tutorials for the desktop application called Stream Avatars. Stream Avatars is about $15 on Steam right now, I'll put the link in the info panel, and it's basically just a fun mini game for viewers of your stream, whether you're in Mixer or Twitch or DLive or even YouTube, you can use this application and connect it to your stream for your viewers to interact with. And it's a lot of fun. It adds a lot of interactivity for your viewers and it really gets the chat rolling. So I'm going to show you in this video how to set up the general and login details and even how to connect the game to OBS to get you all set up. In the next several videos, I'll show you how to set up the mini games, how to get your avatars imported into stream avatars and how to even set up the shop, maybe even recolor the avatars because for instance, you can get Pokemon as avatars here, but they don't come with shinies. So I can show you how to create your own shinies or maybe even special Pokemon. You can, for instance, make Christmas themed Pokemon or maybe Halloween themed Pokemon. I did that one year. That was a lot of fun. So I'll show you how to do all that stuff. But in this video, we're going to start with the general details. So if you go over here to general, we're going to set up the viewer spawning. So if you're a streamer and you have generally a really large chat with a lot of people, stream avatars can get really dense really fast and it can really work your CPU sometimes, especially if you're using slobs. I actually wouldn't recommend using stream avatars and slobs at the same time because slobs is already sort of going to be overworking your computer and if you're somebody with a lot of viewers in chat, it, then the combination of slobs and stream avatars is really going to overload. So I would probably suggest just using typical OBS when you use stream avatars. You can use slobs, but just be aware that your bitrate might have some problems. So back to viewer spawning, it's going to get really dense really fast if you have a lot of people in your chat. So we're going to do a few things to maybe minimize that. For instance, you can set your choose which viewers get an avatar to follow and sub. So a viewer has to follow you first for them to get an avatar. And you can also set this to active chatters only. So if somebody's not an active chatter, then they're not gonna see their avatar. Once they begin chatting again, they'll see it again. And if they stop chatting, the avatar will despawn. You can also set your max avatar spawn. I would probably leave it on 80 or even make it lower than 80. I would never make it higher than 80. You can, but again, it gets really dense really fast, and that can really overwork your computer sometimes, especially if you're playing an intensive game. We can leave the rest of this sort of, we can just leave it the way it is at the default. The interactable extension, if you're on Twitch, this is for Twitch, Mixer isn't going to have this, DLive isn't going to have this, and YouTube isn't going to have this. So if you are a Twitch streamer, I would recommend getting this extension because it makes it much easier for your viewers to change their avatars, to dress up their avatars, to make their avatars fart, for instance, or dance, or even duel other players. So you're going to want that extension. Once you hook up Twitch, you'll be able to see the link to the extension right here. So I would highly recommend setting up the extension for stream avatars. For other streaming platforms or even mobile devices, because they're not going to see the extension on mobile devices, they're going to have to use the chat commands, which can be a little bit of a pain, but eventually you get the hang of it. So if you're going to use stream avatars, you might want to have a link to the general stream avatars chat commands, because it'll be a lot easier for your viewers to mess around with it. Rest of this, rest of this we can just sort of leave alone. And we're going to go ahead to login details. This is really easy to set up. You have your various streaming services, once again, Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, and DLive, and you just have to set up the authorization tokens. So you just hit get channel token. It's going to open up another browser. Make sure that you're already logged into your Twitch account, and when you've successfully gotten the token, this will turn green. Same for your bot authorization token. This is going to give stream avatars the ability to write in the Twitch chat or any stream chat that you have. For instance, if your viewer wants to see how much currency they have in their inventory, then the bot will be able to tell them if they have access to a bot token. This one is signed into my general Twitch account, but you can of course make your own bot account if you don't have one already, or if you have one already, you wanna sign into the bot account on Twitch, hit get bot token, and when it's successful, this is gonna turn green. 
So now that we've set up the general login details, I'm going to show you how to actually set up your stream avatars to OBS. This is going to involve creating a game capture source. Okay, so I can't actually show you me doing it, but I will walk you through it. So first you're going to want to hit connect. And this is the screen that you're going to see on your screen. Notice the background is gray, it's really drab, and you have all these various access tools. For instance, if we press this here, you can spawn more avatars in if you want to make it look like your chat's got a lot of people inside of it. You can also blow them up. We just, oh, I'm going to feel so bad about this. They're about to blow up. Ah! Oh, no. Oh, that sucks. I'm so sorry. And there's also, for instance, if you want to get the star going, this is a mini game that we'll talk about later. Okay. So to get it set up in OBS, right, right now you're seeing a display capture of it, but you actually want to set it up as a game capture. So I'm actually going to add an image here so we can, you know, give them a little background to play with. And to do a game capture, you're going to want to, of course, go to your OBS, add it as a source, capture a specific window and say the window is streaming avatars. And then if you scroll down a little bit more in the properties for game capture, it's going to say allow transparency. So you're going to want to allow transparency. And when you've done that, it's going to look like this. Now you can make the screen take up the full 1980 by 1020. If you right click on the game capture source, go to transform and say fit to screen and that'll fit it to your screen. And you can move this around if you want your avatars, you know, closer down to the bottom here. And there, of course, is the mini game. So that is how you generally set up stream avatars. You set it up again as a game capture. You want to allow for transparency. And then this is what it's going to look like. So we can now we can I think we can slingshot them here. Slingshotting. Oh, and then you can drop a bomb. Now be aware that some of the avatars that you might download might be fairly big. So Wilmer, for instance, is huge. So if you don't want to take, if you don't want them to take up so much of the screen, either don't use them or minimize the actual size of the avatars by just playing with the resolution in OBS. But that's how you set it up. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you for the next video. Thanks guys.